I've got the document open that we worked on for our background. Now you could make a new document if you want to, but I'm just actually going to keep everything in one place. So I'm going to leave my um, colour scheme that we had this morning out in case I need it. I'm going to choose my top layer, go down to this layer here, and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to group from those layers. So you can see if I do background like that, it sticks it all in one nice and neat layer. Now you can see my background here has got a little padlock next to it. Now that means I can't move it. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So go to my little padlock icon and for this one. And then I can hide that and you can see it's not going to shift about, it's not going to do anything. So that gives us a nice sort of blank canvas to work on. Now looking at typography, the first thing I'm going to do is just go to my text tools, so my normal text tool here. And I'm going to draw a box for me to write in and then I'm going to type out new wave. Now you can see here I've got quite a bold font, so I've gone for Helvetica, you could go for Arial, anything that's sort of very digital, very sans serif. You can see in our sort of text option here, we've got an option for filter. So if I click OK on that. Now if I select that, you can see I get different options. So I've got sans serif here, so I'm going to select sans serif, and what that does is that filters everything in here, so it only gives me sans serif fonts, which is a really nice, simple way of doing this. So I'm probably going to go for something nice and simple. So I'm probably going to go Arial Black, so they're nice and bold. We're going to be distorting this text, we're going to be doing lots of things with it. So you want a simplistic font to start with. Um, if you go for something that's got lots of detail or lots of things going on, the more you distort it, the harder it is going to be to read. You can see the colour of my text is up here, so this is our options panel. So depending on what you're working with, it will give you the options for that tool. So these are all my text options. I'm going to centre align it here, so that it's just in the middle of my box. And I'm actually going to make it white, I think. So I can go on here, change that to white, and then we've got nice big bold text there. Nice and simple. So if I click OK on there, or you can press Enter. Now if we look at our examples, we've got some sort of distorted texts here, where they're all in different angles, and they're sort of um, twisted and bent. And then we've got examples here where the words are sort of split up, and they've got loads of effects on them. So first thing I'm going to look at is how to do those sort of warped effects to text. So we want to go up here to Edit. And we want to go to transform, so transform means to change, to do something. And you can see we've got an option here for warp. So if I select that, it doesn't do anything at first, but then you can see I've got these options in my options bar. So we've got arc, we've got arc lower, arc upper, etc. So if I just go for arc, and then I've got some options here, so I'm just going to go like that. And you'll see it starts to arc my work and then you can see the more I change these the more it sort of changes the way it is doing that so I could go okay on that and then I could make this quite big so I'm going to stretch it and then I could start to copy and paste that and then I might overlay it over the top I might change the color of that piece of text so I might go for something from my color scheme so if I get my color scheme up so I can see that and I might eye drop that pink color there we go and then again to start to get some trippy effects think about how you offset these think about how you layer them you might want to do so like a shadow effect like that. You might want to play around with your layer blend modes and start to get them to interact with each other. So things like that are quite interesting. Obviously, one of our examples had a outline on the text. You can see there that one. So same thing as your shapes that we did on the background one. Double click the layer. Again, you can add things like drop shadows. You can add outer glows. So you can make it glow. But what we're going to do here is the stroke and add an outline to it. And again, you can change the colour of that. So I could go for a green outline or a yellow one. And click OK. So if I wanted to change the warp on that, I can just try a different effect. So image, 
edit, transform and warp. Now you can see it tells me this is the one I've already got applied, so I can go back and I can try something different. So I could go for twist. Now you'll see with twist, it gives us this grid which has got this sort of twist in and then it shows us what we're doing as we drag these sort of values up here and how that changes the letter. So you can get lots of interesting effects. Now if you look at some of our examples, they were sort of copied and pasted and they've got lots of layers going on and lots of things happening, so you can play around with that. Um, if we wanted to do something like this here, or this one, so you can see this one's got this sort of very distinct wave in the text, I could write myself a new piece of text, so I'm just going to highlight those and move those out of the way. So same thing again. Okay. Now if I wanted to go for that sort of distinctive wave, I'm actually going to put this on two lines, that's going to work a bit nicer for me. Now I'm going to have to rasterize that in order to do that, because it won't let me, if you see, won't let me do that. So you can either click rasterize there, or you can right click your layer and rasterize that. And all that does is it turns it from a piece of text that you can rewrite or change the font of to sort of a flat image. So if you're happy with the font and you're happy that you spelt it right and things like that, you can go to rasterize and then we can do things like liquify. We could also try some of these distort options here. So again, we've got something like wave there and you'll see this starts to give you quite interesting effects. So if I click OK there, we get this funky effect here. If I undo that, we can have a look at some of our other options. So you're looking specifically at distort, we could try zigzag. And if I zoom out on this little box so I can see what I'm doing, there you go. And again, you've got lots of different options here. Now we want to distort it in some sense, but we want it to be readable. So always think about, is the piece of text that I'm working with still readable or have I gone too far? So legibility, the, the ability to be able to read something is still really important here. Now if I go to my liquify panel, I'm actually going to zoom in a bit more and I'm going to make my brush size a bit smaller. And I'm going to go like that. So you can see there I've done it too much. So you can take down the density and you can take down the pressure. See, that's a bit better, that's more what I'm looking for, so a little bit less pressure. Again, and then I can click OK. So there we get our sort of distorted or wavy or twisted effect font. And again, you can still change the colour of this, so now that it's a rasterized sort of shape, if I wanted to change the colour of that, I can go to my paint bucket tool, I can choose my colours, say I want to go yellow, and then make sure I'm on that layer and then I can click the letters. So make sure you select it on that layer, click the letters and then it will fill that for you. Now this one here has got the letters sort of split up, so we could do the same sort of thing. So type out our word. And what you want to do is you want to type each letter individually, so you want them as separate things. So it's a bit annoying, but type out the letter N, click OK, type out the letter E, click OK, type out the letter W, etc. So that gives them as separate layers. So you can see before we were in trap layers, now we're all separate. That means we can do different things to these, so obviously we could make these different colours. We could technically make them different fonts if we wanted to, if we wanted to take it even further. So I might choose a different font. Now remember it's still on sans serif for me so that makes it nice and easy. So 
You can make them different sizes so you can scale them up. And remember, if you don't want things to distort, hold shift. I might change the angle of them a little bit. Do something like that. And then you can play around with which ones have got outlines on, which ones have got drop shadows on. By going into each layer, you're playing around. You can add gradients over the top of a letter, so using the gradient overlay thing here. And then I can go to that box and I can choose a type. So that letter's green, so I want to go for something in the greens panel. So I'm going to go for this green and yellow one. So again, I could do that. I could add a stroke to it. And I might make the stroke pink. And then obviously we've got our outer glow as well. So that's our sort of third effect. So we've got sort of warping and using that transform effect to create different warps. We're using the liquify or the filters to create different distortions. And then we're separating out the layers and playing around with different fonts, different sizes, different compositions, and applying some of those different effects in our layers panel. The last one is this one here where it's all sort of split and broken up. Now obviously it's very similar to sort of this one here where we've got different letters of different sizes and things like that. If you want to sort of split your text up, so if I type out one last example, again you want something that's fairly bold to work with. I'm just going to move these out of the way. Now obviously if you're starting to get loads of this kind of stuff going on, you can make your life a lot easier if you're linking or grouping these things together. I'm just going to link those and then I can move them out of the way. I'm going to make that bigger. So if I do Command Plus and I zoom right into that, now my selection tool here lets me draw around the object. So I could do that and then it gives me that selection. We've got several options here, so it will normally be on this one, which only lets you draw one selection at a time. If I wanted to do this one, it lets me draw several sections at a time. If I wanted to do this one, it lets me draw sections and then cut sections out of those existing sections. So I'm going to go for the second one and I'm going to draw some sort of different size, different varied sections out of these letters. And then what happens is when I go back to my normal tool, as long as you're on this text layer and then you've got this rasterized, I can change those about, so I can shift them, I can move them, I can make them bigger. And you can see it's only changing those ones that have got the marching ant selection around it. So if I click OK on that, it then turns it back into one layer. If I do Command D to deselect that, you can see we've then got this very sort of distorted, glitchy sort of text, which sort of mimics this thing going on here. Obviously you could do that with shapes over the top, so you can see they've sort of hidden parts of the letters. Um, all of this is really just about playing around and exploring and seeing what you can get out of it. Obviously you could go for a text, so if you look at this example where we've got that sort of bold outline and the text is see-through, you could do that with something like this. So we could go to here, add a stroke to our letters, you can see I've got this crazy pink one, I might take that down a little bit. And then if I go to these effects, you can see there, the actual colour of the text has disappeared and I've only got this outline. So if I then had a funky pattern background inside, then you'd be able to start to see the gradient or the funky texture or whatever pattern that I've got behind it. So those are four sort of text techniques. So have a go with that word new wave play around with it, see what you can get, see what you like the look of. You might start to think about how that goes on your background, um, but it's really just exploring, using your colour schemes and using those sort of same techniques that we looked at earlier with typography.